Hey, Liz, you, how you doing today? I'm doing well. And back by popular demand, it is Mr. Robot. Everybody loves Mr. Robot. You ask so many interesting questions and you're actually doing something a little different tonight. You've moved away from the crypto sphere because that's just way too depressing right now. Yeah. And you're going into something else. So enlighten us what you're going to do tonight, please. Yeah, it's it's so interesting how, um, you know, connections are formed where uh, I am interested in, in this in this uh, information called the Seth material. And here I am, met, uh, you know, I'm acquainted with Liz and she can channel entities that are in the non-physical. So it, it, it really works out. Um, hope people are uh, at least intrigued in this information. It's pretty random for the normal average everyday person, but uh, it basically has to do with reality, consciousness, um, purpose, pretty interesting. Um, what makes the Seth material interesting is Seth was an entity channeled by this woman named Joanne Roberts, Roberts and uh, Seth basically paints a very clear picture of what life is like when you're not in the physical reality. Um, so that's why it's so awesome. And it's, it seems like it's almost unlimited. Like I, I listen to his information probably every day just because it's so interesting. Uh, not very actively, usually just when I'm going to sleep just cause it's, it's a, a great way to segue into dream state. Um, and I haven't even heard all of it. So it's, it, it feels endless. You can find it on YouTube. Um, there's a really good narrator. And uh, I kind of think that he might have had like a soul contract to narrate it because his voice, you really like build this whole identity that that's kind of Seth. Um, he has a good voice. So you guys should check him out on YouTube. Uh, I'll, I'll find the information in Liz can link to maybe one of his videos or something, but anyways, um, so Joanne Roberts is deceased. I'm wondering if we can maybe just start with her real quick. Yeah, it's actually Jane Roberts. Um, Great. I just looked it up. I didn't know that, but yeah, it's actually sorry. Jane Roberts. No, it's okay. Look, nobody's perfect for goodness sake. <laughs> um, so Jane Roberts, let me look her picture up. Um, so she's a spirit, um, sorry, she's a psychic medium. I've got her here. Uh, she was born May 8th, 1929. And she actually died in 1984. I didn't realize the Seth speaks and the Seth material and all that was so old. I've actually never read it or listened to it. Although mm -hmm. I get a lot of emails and a lot of requests, Liz, have you ever listened to it? Uh, oh, cool. but I haven't. To be wow. honest with you, no, I haven't. That's that's, uh, that's. I'm glad that you've had some people who are interested. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So I have her here. Okay. And she actually has her arm around a little boy. Is that going to be Seth? So what's interesting is last time I probed Seth with you, you actually said... So we were trying to probe Seth and you said a, a young boy was coming through so that mm -hmm. can you ask her if that's the current incarnation of Seth or if that's a non-physical version of Seth? Is that the non-physical version of Seth? Yes. Has he been reincarnated? He's due to be reincarnated soon. Interesting. Um, can you ask her if Seth is a collection of consciousness or information or if it's like one individual oh uh, are you is you a is he a collection of consciousness no this is one individual he's very powerful and he always has major impact on society 
he actually, in one of his past lives, was around the time of Jesus. And he was also a follower of Jesus. Okay. That's just one of his past lives. Uh, He always ends up in this big role in some way in his lifetimes, or even now it's even after his lifetime, right? Because she was channeling him. How did she come across him in the first place? Do you know? Yes. So Jane was uh, painting a picture. I believe she was, uh, I don't know if she was an artist, but she was, she was working on some kind of art, I think a painting. And I believe she was kind of meditating. And essentially what happened was she noticed her point of view, her point of consciousness kind of left her body and went out th- outside. And uh, um, at some point, I don't know, I think when she would leave, her husband noticed that there was essentially another entity like trying to come through and talk and stuff while she was um, out of body. So it was kind of a fluke is what it seemed is, you know, she wasn't really trying to do this. That happens. And let me explain why Uh, she was experiencing trans mediumship. So when she left her state of consciousness, She did not have the, she's like, I was a fool. I'm like, really? But she did not have the uh, grounding and protection and all that in place. You know, as mediums go through the years, we learn so many more tools and so many ways to protect ourselves. So it doesn't surprise me she didn't do grounding and protection. Um, But when she would leave her state of consciousness, she's telling me, that's when the spirits would come in and speak through her. It's called trans mediumship. I'm actually, and those of you that have listened to me for quite some time, you will know I'm very uncomfortable with trans mediumship. I'm very uncomfortable with automated writing. If that's something that you like and you want to pursue, that is entirely up to you, you know, each to their own. But I will say this, when you allow a spirit to come in and take over your body and you hand over that control, you could end up with an entity attachment. Mm -hmm. I actually know somebody that did that. They've had an entity, a very dark black magic entity attachment to them for the past 13 years. And we've been doing CTT like crazy to try and get rid of it. And it's very difficult. So just a little warning in there. But that is what is she, she? That is what she was doing. She was doing trans mediumship. I'm sorry to throw all that in there, but please go ahead. Interesting. Can you ask her what what there is to protect yourself from that is non physical? What what would the normal person have to worry about? You know, like these negative entities that you mentioned. What? So the question is, how do you protect yourself? What is, well, the best way to protect yourself, what she just said was you don't even make connections. Right. (laughs) And I feel like a lot of the information uh, that she was putting out, and I don't know this because I've never read it, but I feel like there was a, a big religious attachment to that information. And she's telling me that is the reason religion advises us to stay away from this stuff. It's to protect us. And so the best way to stay away is through just non-communication, non-opening of portals and things like that. Um, So that was, that's her answer. Would she consider such a thing as evil to exist in non-physical No, she says we are all light beings. It's the darkness that we bring here on earth. So that is her personal opinion and her viewpoint, by the way. Okay. Um, one more question for Jane. Um, mm-hmm. How does she feel that we're kind of talking to her at this moment? She's excited. Cool. She's very excited about it. Um, I don't feel she's been channeled that much since... Uh, her departure. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like there were a couple of attempts to channel her, but nothing overly, uh, you know, successful, certainly not asking her about her work here on the earth plane and how she feels about it. And that's something she obviously wants to talk about. And she feels that her work on the earth plane elevated her consciousness because it enlightened so many people. And she wants to thank you all for being followers of her work. It actually allowed her to ascend into a higher spiritual realm when she crossed over. Awesome. That's so cool. Can you ask her what that's like ascending to a higher realm? Oh, that I've never been asked that before. What is it like to be able to ascend to a higher realm? She's like, it's magnificent. It's the most beautiful thing. You have this opening up of the consciousness, unlike all of the other, you know, levels, the previous levels that you were. She's like, it's like a revolving door. You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out lifetime after lifetime. And you feel like you're going nowhere. It's like the hamster wheel, right? And when you reach a point of ascension and she's like, it's not complete ascension because she will have other lifetimes here on planet earth. And I'm asking her, will you always be a medium? And I feel like she will be, um, she has many lifetimes as a medium. She's telling me, but anyway, that point of ascension, what is she saying? It, it's just truly magnific magnificent. It's, it's unlike anything that you have ever experienced here on the earth plane. Can you ask her if in that ascended state of being, if she, you know, has like a, uh, like an astral body or if she's more like a floating bubble of consciousness? Ooh, are you, now that you've ascended into the higher level, are you in an astral body or are you floating bubble of conscious floating bubble of consciousness still interesting but i know what you're asking okay i get what you're saying and just for our listeners who may not understand that question which most of them are probably do but just for clarification you're talking about when you're ascended at the very top of the ladder right and then you get this astral body like a god um, not like a godlike body but like an angelic body right um, but prior to that, we're all just these orbs and little balls of energy. She's only ascended from stage three to four. Okay. And I'm not exactly sure how many levels there are altogether, but I can tell you, most of us are stuck in two and three. Okay. It is very difficult to ascend. You have to complete thousands upon thousands of life, life lessons, and you have to be able to process and expand your consciousness whilst here on the earth plane. And if you do that, like she was a servant, she was saying a servant of God, she says that allowed her to ascend because money wasn't an object. It was more just getting this information out. And the fact that it was so well received, she's absolutely shocked by that. Well, can, um, can you ask her what her current consensus is, her view is on God? Is it, a, is it basically just everything or is it a, like a singular consciousness? Ooh, uh, what is your current viewpoint on God? It's a collective, she says. And I'm saying, but is it not a singular source? No, it's the main collective source. And the way she's describing it or what she's showing to me is like a light socket, you know, like a light socket, a, a plug. And we plug in there. We plug ourselves into this collective consciousness. And some of us vibrate at lower frequencies. Some of us vibrate at higher frequencies. And obviously our vibrational state changes throughout the day and throughout our lives, right? So oh. that's what we're plugging into. And I'm saying, but isn't there one supreme being? And she says, yes, but they're untouchable. And nobody can ever really see who they are. I, mm. I find that to be so bizarre. 
I, yeah. I've tried to look for God myself. I came to this really bright light, like almost like standing next to the sun. And you cannot stand there for too long, right? Because the power is so overwhelming. You can't, you just can't stay there, right? It feels like you're going to explode. So I, I actually don't know exactly what God is. I do right. know that God exists. What did she say in her books? Um, well, there, there's actually a chapter in uh, Seth Speaks about God. I, I usually, I haven't really listened to that one. Um, I usually just listen to all the stuff about it. Her, her work or Seth's work um, is kind of like a huge encyclopedia of kind of like how to turn your thoughts into reality um, and like why things are the way they are. So, so it's so diverse that you can actually focus on a whole subject for like a long time. So I, I haven't really gotten to that part yet about what Seth let's actually channel Seth and ask him the same question. Okay. What, so what, what exactly is God? Yeah. What exactly is God? It's the all being the all knowing it's, it's the one that we see again. He's saying it's the one that we cannot see. We're not allowed to see. And, you know, I find that quite, I, I'm troubled by that, to be honest with you. Yeah, it feels kind of like we're in this giant uh, science experiment. It's like, is what's outside of that white light? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? It's almost like we can never know because whilst we're here on the earth plane, if we had that all-knowing information, there would be no reason to actually exist in a human body, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's no point. What's the point of coming here at all if we're all-knowing? I'm, I'm not even all-knowing, and I have access to a lot of information, but I don't have that privilege of being all-knowing at all. When you cross over, you do get to be all knowing for the most part there are some things that you can't know but there are also universal or spiritual laws that you have to abide by so sometimes when i've tapped in they've said i can't give you that information because it's against the spiritual law and so you know the, but god is what he says is is the unknown it's unknown. We're not allowed to look. We're not allowed to see. We're not allowed to visualize it. And I'm would, saying, but why? Well, would uh, would Seth say that um, physical reality is God? Would you say that physical reality is God? No. Okay. Interesting. Or would he? Would uh, Seth? say that every person is an extension of God? Would you say that every person is an extension of God? Absolutely. So the weird thing about that is this, like, if we're all just extensions of this, you know, ultimate perfection, then why do we have to do, why do we have to break apart and to be these souls with problems, you know? I... I know that is the, you know, million dollar question, right? Uh, let's ask, why do we have to break apart and go through this suffering and the souls? Because it's a challenge, but I'm saying, but what is the ultimate goal? And the ultimate goal is to achieve angelic status. But why do we need to achieve anything at all? And that's, that's how it is by design. So even though that they're in heaven, they're in the spiritual world, they still don't have all the answers as to why we're, you know, in and out, in and out, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, hardship after hardship after hardship, right? Yeah. And then even when we do have a, a lifetime that's relatively easy, which I've uncovered a few times, we then go, uh, you know, into the spirit world, very disappointed that we didn't accomplish anything. And so the next lifetime, we make it very hard on ourselves. Yeah, totally. 
that's something that someone like me could become paranoid about. It's like if it's like you have you ever seen the movie called Strangers in Fiction? No. There's a movie where, where Will Ferrell finds out that he's actually being narrated by a writer. Like he can hear like a, like an omnipresent like voice in the sky and uh and he becomes kind of like scared because all of a sudden you know he, he he tries to stop doing everything altogether to you know to figure out to like uh to not progress the story because it's like the story must continue and and he becomes it's a, you'd have to watch the movie to maybe apply it to this but uh it sounds similar i mean <laughs> You know, it's the thing to, to just add to that. Take a, you know, killer that's in jail that has done the most heinous, horrific crimes, right? And on a 3D level, that's absolutely disgusting, especially if your uh, family member was a victim, okay? But then it's like, take off the 3D, and the circumstances that they were born into, which were ultimately designed before they got here, is what made them the way they are. It's it's the strangest yeah. concept, right? But it's true. And it's like, it, you know, that whole thing with channeling Hitler uh, last week, and we're going to do a huge thing on channeling Hitler. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if we're going to be able to do it in one thing. I mean, it's hundreds of questions for Hitler. But, you know, that that whole thing about Hitler, when we went in and we found out why he was the way he was and it was designed like that before he even got down here. Right. Yeah. It's just so shocking. It's like I find that actually free will is almost non-existent. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I mean, I explained this to one of my friends uh Basically, I think free will is actually more like a whole tree of options you have, and all tr all options are predetermined. So, no matter which way you feel like you're making a decision, it's it still always is going to have an outcome that is kind of predetermined. But I, don't know. I agree, I agree. Um, For the most part, I agree. The only thing I find that alters that tree a little bit, a is with the future self readings. If there's information there that you don't like, then you you can change that information. But then who's to say you weren't supposed to have a future self reading with Liz in the first place right. so that you could change that information, right? But I, I mean, ultimately, I agree. Let me ask Jane and Seth what they think about free will. What do you think about the concept of free will? See, they're both shaking their head. It's non-existent, right? Everything is by design. Yeah. Totally. Can you ask Seth? Um, let's see. I oh, just forgot what I was going to say. Um, well, I have a whole bunch of questions listed anyways. Let's see. Okay. Um, if an average person thinks about someone who's in non-physical, does that non-physical person automatically kind of like start hearing your thoughts? <laughs> That's an excellent question. If, if the uh, physical person starts thinking about somebody who's non-physical, is the non-physical person or soul alerted to that immediately? They actually know that right before you start thinking about them, they form a connection to you. So yeah. that that's interesting, okay? Because I've always said your thoughts are never private, Okay. Everybody thinks that their thoughts are, you know, hidden behind the, the skull and, you know, nobody can see what's really going on. Those thoughts are not private. So yeah. even when you're putting a thought out into the universe, right, whether it's good or bad, that becomes an energy form totally. and that energy form can be picked up on. It, and that actually can segue into this other concepts that Seth talks about often um, he calls them um, thought forms um, 
And a thought form is when a part of your thoughts can actually become physical and you may actually interact with them. Uh, you, so uh, you might actually encounter a person in real life who's actually just an extension of yourself. Um, can you ask Seth if he has any clarification that he could provide on that a thought form? Can you provide any clarification on the thought form? All thought forms are picked up and they can be read by anybody in the spirit world or anybody that can read energy. So your thoughts emanate your karma. Wow. Okay. And if you're constantly putting out bad thoughts into the universe, especially dark thoughts, right? And the example he's giving is like a school shooter, okay? This is what he's telling me. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm thinking about. And, and the more you think about it and the more you project that dark energy out there, well, the dark love that, right? So they're going to come in and they're going to connect with you in order for this action to take place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You see what I mean? So if you're putting out positive energy all the time, okay, it seems like the white light tends to come and connect with you. Now, let me put in a asterisk about positive energy. When you're constantly putting out, and I've said this before, positive energy, oh, you know, somebody stole from me, but that's okay because they needed it and I didn't, you know. The problem with that is the fact that then you have things that never get resolved in your life, right? And Seth is agreeing with me on this. And you can't just sweep everything under the rug. You have to experience a level of darkness and you have to face those consequences so you can work through them. Yeah. If you're constantly brushing it under the carpet, those experiences become bigger and bigger and bigger and to the point that they're absolutely traumatizing, life-changing experiences that force you to make those changes. Now, if you don't make those changes as they come in, this is what he's telling me. If they don't make those changes as they come in, then your consciousness actually becomes trapped and your thoughts become trapped. Okay. And therefore you failed your task during this lifetime and you will have to repeat it again. Okay. Yeah. makes sense. Um, um, can you ask Seth if more than one identity or soul occupies a body at any given time? Does more than one identity occupy a soul or the body at any given time? No, just one. But that soul morphs and it goes through many changes, right? Mm -hmm. It's still the soul, but based upon the experiences of the person, it morphs and creates its own personality. Okay. And uh, would Seth say that your past lives are actually living in the current moment right now? Would you say that the past lives are actually living in the current moment right now? Yes. So I think you're talking about multiple timelines. That's well, not what he's talking about. So Seth basically says that all time is in the current space so your past lives and your future lives are all actually playing out right now in the current time um can you ask him if that's true um is that true Ooh, he says yes but i'm like how is that true because when we're going and we're doing ctt sessions we're constantly having to go back into the past lives. Mm -hmm. And he says, yes. And I'm saying, but how can you say that all things are happening all at once? Ah, because in the spirit world, here you go. Because in the spirit world, there's no concept of time. So therefore, it seems as if 
everything is happening at once. Okay. Now, when you're a soul in a human body that's bound by gravity, then your concept completely changes. But time and space are not even fathomable in the spirit world, right? Yeah. So that's why they think, you know, I've always wondered why that theory or how people could ever pick up on that theory. And that explains everything to me because if they're channeling a being who's in the spirit world, that's not bound by space or time, then of course it's all happening at once, right? Mm -hmm. It feels that way because you're the all knowing being at that point. So you can take a look at anything you want to look at past life, future life, whatever, whilst you are there, but the actuality of being a human being and having a soul in the body is a uh, very different. And we are, you know, we have to go by the timelines and the so, timelines are singular. So on that note, I want to throw an abstract question in there. Um, given that from his perspective, or I I'm, I'm giving him a, a male cause that was his, that was his uh, gender when he, did the book but anyways um if if he can see the end of the universe from his perspective oh <laughs> excuse me can you see the end of the universe from your perspective it's endless but so um i think it's the second law of thermodynamics all heat moves to cold and uh so all the planets are moving away from each other and all the things are moving away from the stars. So eventually everything is going to be cold and lifeless. Um, I'm just wondering what happens after that. Would, would the universe reset? Would we have another big bang? Oh, so would the universe reset or we have another big bang? No, the universe expands and contracts. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what he's saying. So it, it's in and out, and that's all to do with the magnetism of the universe. It's just the way it's designed. It's, it's just one huge, uh, you know, like box of magnets, right? Yeah. And, and the magnets, sometimes they stick to one another, and then you take them apart, and you can shake up the box, and they're all in different positions, and it has a different magnetic pull in the box is what he's telling me. So the universe expands and contracts, but I'm saying if it's endless, how does it actually, as a, a, an entity, you know, manage to expand and contract altogether? Because how can something expand and contract if it's endless, right? If there's no end in sight, surely you would have to have defined edges of the or, universe. Or um, could you ask him what was there before the big bang what 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 was the existence was there souls already the big bang didn't happen okay so so all the matter in the universe didn't come from one singular spot or did it no it came from multiple eruptions yeah. Oh, and what caused those eruptions? What caused those eruptions? The magnetic pull. Was it God who started the universe and everything in it? God who started the universe and everything in it. Yes. Okay. But then we're not allowed to know who. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I can't. So I can't go further than that there. But uh, that's it. That's you know interesting. Um, and on that same topic of space, let's do one more space question. Um, what would happen if someone could go through a black hole? What would be on the other side? Ooh, what would happen if somebody could go through a black hole? They would get sucked away in a continuous vacuum. Would they be able to come out the other side? No, I don't feel that they would be able to come out the other side, he says because they would ultimately destruct due to the force of the vacuum power, that it would be so forceful, it would crush and completely uh, disintegrate the human body. 
Yeah. So fun fact, that's called spaghettification. That's an actual scientific term. <laughs> oh, is your body really? Would, yeah, your body would turn into a pencil point diameter and you'd be a couple miles long of noodle. <laughs> Yeah, and then you eventually, because of the pressure and the speed at which you travel through, you would just burn up. Ah, man, I wish there was. But what's on the other side of a black hole? Is there anything? Is it endless blackness or nothingness? What is on the other side of a black hole? Your soul. What do you mean? Oh, because you would come out the other side. Your soul would still survive, but the human body wouldn't. Okay. Yes, that is a very uh, obvious answer there. Thank you. Um, So what would be on the other side of a black hole if hypothetically we were to travel through it? Like what physical or what would we see? Or what reality? Yeah, what reality? We would end up in different uh, different, uh, geometrical dimensions whatever that's supposed to mean yeah so there's supposedly different dimensions that work can you ask me if the, if different dimensions work with different laws of physics where things would be totally different than here Do different dimensions work with different laws of physics yes okay well I'll leave that up to everyone else to think up of more questions. Um, can let's see. Um, how can a regular person become aware of our non-physical aspects? How can a regular person become aware of our non-physical aspects? He's being playful now. He's like ghost hunting. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. He's playful. Um, but just seeking out the information that's beyond the 3d reality right it's just constantly thinking and he's saying not getting lost in conspiracy theories that's not what he's talking about he's talking about the non-physical um investigations like ghosts spirits communication uh telepathy he just said remote viewing to me um, those sorts of, of inv- you know, adventures and investigations and learning as much as you can. And by keeping an open mind to that information as well, I feel like there's so many things on the earth plane we have not even discovered yet. So there's different energetic beings that present as entities when mm-hmm. we come across them, um, you know, different uh, mirages and things like that, that we have yet to discover, but it's almost like we can't discover them because our conscious minds are still so stuck, he's saying, stuck in the past, stuck in chasing, you know, the norm. And and uh, it's hard for new information to be accepted. Okay. A, a part of that, I forgot exactly which part, but a part of that kind of leads into this next question. Um, In one of the books, he describes what it's like to be a tree. Um, Can you ask him if each plant has a soul, like a, like a thinking consciousness? Yes. Each plant is a soul. Each insect, each, blade of grass each tree each flower so everything has consciousness everything has consciousness yes energy is consciousness um so he's just confirmed something that i've always thought uh yes so it 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 all has a, a soul yes um yeah there's there's a lot to you can go into on that note like uh Like Gaia, you know, like Earth consciousness, like does the Earth have its own thinking identity? identity. Yes. Cool. Well, yep. Interesting stuff. Let's see. Oh, can, uh, how can someone tell if their dream was 
from their physical brain or from the non-physical? If their dream is from the physical brain or the non-physical, it's all non-physical. What are you saying that it's all non-physical? Yeah, dreams are mostly non-physical. I just wonder how like things influence your dreams. Like if you have a TV on and, you know, they're talking about something and you might dream about it. Does your non-physical identity kind of have one foot in, one foot out? <laughs> Does a have one foot in, one foot out? Yes. Okay. And why just from his books, I know this, why does one, um, if they have a non-physical part of their dream, like for instance, he, he's often a teacher. So he said when, uh, like he was incarnated that when he was dreaming, he would actually be in classes, uh, learning how to do like this mentorship stuff. So there's like a whole community of souls like teaching each other and mm -hmm. he says that basically when this happens it's kind of like a a rule that you don't remember it why don't we remember these um lessons that we learn when we're sleeping why don't we remember these lessons that we learn when we're sleeping because as a human being you're not supposed to technically ele elevate your consciousness to a non-human level, right? They want to keep you in the human form. If you are aware that every time you slept, you connected with the non-physical, the spirit world, you became all-knowing, you had access to information, and why would you ever want to wake up? Yeah. And does does that also apply when you're born, you make yourself forget everything? Is that Ooh. something you do yourself or is that a rule of the universe? That's a rule of the universe. Okay. I'm saying, how does that happen? Do we do it ourselves? No, it's it has to do with brain development. Hmm. Okay. So your brain starts shutting down the all knowing as you start to, you know, have traumatic events. And you have to understand, as a child, traumatic events can be things that as adults, they're very minute to us. So for example, okay, a baby crying because it's hungry. Now, it doesn't understand that, you know, the mother may may have to go into the kitchen make a bottle it just knows that its needs are not being met at that very moment yeah that is extremely traumatic and that starts taking a little piece of the soul out right the all knowing and it starts putting replacing it with you know nobody cares about me this dark energy this dark thinking which is you know i'm neglected uh my bottle's not coming fast enough. Yeah. You know, they don't care about me. And so little things like that. This is where I go into this whole thing about controlled crying. And I know I'm going to become very un unpopular when I say this, because a <laughs> lot of parents use control crying. I instinctively knew that controlled crying was a disaster. I just knew it. And my friends actually did controlled crying. And, and if you don't know what controlled crying is, it's from a particular age. And I'm talking very early, possibly like six weeks, a couple of months where the baby will wake up during the night and want feeding. You let the baby cry it out. Right. Yeah. And the baby knows that nobody's coming. So there's no point crying it out because you're just going to be ignored. There's no point. Everybody's asleep. They're not waking up for you. Yeah. Now, what sort of message does that send back to that little person? It sends back that I'm 
I'm not worthy enough of being loved and being cared for and being attended to, right? And and things like control crying really traumatize on a cellular and soul level. Now, a lot of people do it. Their babies end up sleeping. They, um, you know, end up becoming successful human beings. But somewhere in their energy field is this, I'm a burden, I'm unloved, nobody cares for me. So when you start having repeated experiences like that as a baby and just tiny experiences, it slowly takes away that all knowing and it replaces it with the shutting off. Okay. Birth trauma. I did a whole write up about birth trauma on the CTT on the, on the Patreon when I did a CTT session, even the mere fact of being born is very traumatizing. Okay. The, the mother can't hold the baby. There's bright white lights. Um, you know, you're, you're being poked and prodded, suctioned, your umbilical cords being cut, you're being cleaned up, you're being wrapped up in the blanket, you know, and then, and then you might get to, you know, your mother may get to hold you. And that, I mean, that's extremely traumatic for a baby when they're being born. So, you know, it's those experiences that after a while, they completely shut down the, the all knowing, the telepathy. And it goes, you know, it brings you into a more human realm. Okay. I see. Um, what is Seth? What, what would Seth describe energy healing really being like energy healing, like Reiki? Uh, what is happening when someone is energetically healing someone else? I'm sorry. Repeat that question to me, please. Yeah. What, what kind of energy exactly is flowing through an energy healer when they're working on somebody? Ooh, what kind of energy is flowing through an energy healing when they're working? So with somebody, an energy healer, it's God, it's God like energy, right? It's the white light. However, something there happens that, as soon as the healing is finished, the white light completely goes back, right? Mm-hmm. And then the dark energy that you're pulling out of the person or the animal, <clears throat> excuse me, then has to go somewhere. And it oftentimes sticks to the healer. Hmm. Does Seth have any tips for energy healers out there? energy healers out there yes um what's the tip for the energy healer that you would recommend stay clean so it's this constant ritual of grounding and protecting cleansing your body cleansing your soul um transmuting the energy uh you have to be able to unzip yourself from that person or that animal, you know. And um, mm-hmm. would he say that you pretty much do that with your imagination? <clears throat> do you pretty much do that with your imagination? No, you have to ask for the spirit world to come down and help you. Okay. Because usually someone who's trying to ground, I mean, you're just kind of imagining roots going from you and you're, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, so it's interesting that he's saying that you, you're not really doing it yourself that you got to ask for help. So like your spirit guides, for instance, is that what he's saying? Is it a spirit guides? No, it has to come direct from God. That is interesting to me because I do grounding and protection all the time. And it looks like, yeah, okay. You, you know, the grounding and the protection is coming down, but you have to ask for God to cleanse you. Ah, cool. That's great. That's a good, nice tip. It um, is because I didn't know about it. Yeah. Can you ask him if he's the same consciousness that channeled through a through uh Esther Hicks? Are you the same consciousness that was channeled through Esther Hicks? No, she was channeling an entity. Okay. Does does uh 
and this entity is, is referred to as Abraham. Does Seth happen to know Abraham? No, it's a collective. Okay, and then another non-physical person. Um, there's another great channel set of work that is basically kind of just referred to as Cryon, which is K Y or sorry K R Y O N. Um, what does Seth think about Cryon? What do you think about Cryon? It's it's um, enslavement. I don't even know what that is. That means um, I don't know what cryon is, but I feel like it's enslavement of the consciousness. Let me let me pull up the guy's name real quick, just so we get the right guy. Oh, Lee Carroll, um, cryon who is channeled through Lee Carroll. Cryon that is channeled. Carol. It's enslavement. So it's trying to hook a consciousness. Okay. And that happens. And I understand what he means by this. Oftentimes, there are things out there that are going to grab, you know, a lot of attention and a lot of followers. And the information is so fascinating that people become just, enthrall, you know, enthralled by it. But because it's being channeled as a collective and not maybe uh, he's saying from a, a direct source, mm -hmm. what happens is darkness can actually inject information into that collective, right? And slowly over time, that collective becomes more dark than light. When the collective becomes more dark than light, it then starts enslaving the consciousness because people will find the information very addictive. Yeah. So what's weird about that is, um, can you actually uh, channel or um, probe Lee Carroll? Yes. Do you, are you connected with him? Yes. Um, for his higher self or his soul, can you ask if Cryon is a um, basically an angelic being or from his perspective? An angelic being from your perspective? No. Or He doesn't actually know what it is. Okay. Does does Cryon is he in full? Uh, what did you say? Uh, full trance when he channels Cryon? Oh, are you in trance mediumship when he? Yes. Yeah. So anyone who's interested in this kind of stuff, if you YouTube Cryon Lee Carroll, um, it's pretty awesome information. It's same line as all three of these, uh, like Bashar, Abraham, all of these entities. They're they're telling you like what your point of existing is. So there's a lot of good information in there. So that's why I'm surprised that you're pulling um, that, it, that, well, I mean, you know, as a collective, obviously there could be negative stuff in there, but, but I guess there seems to be more good stuff from, can you ask Lee Carroll if uh, it seems like he doesn't really know. Could you ask cry on the collective if they have good intentions? I mean, it's a yin and yang, right? Yeah. There's good and bad and everything. So I feel like part of it does have good intentions and the other part may not have good intentions. It really is down to the individual consciousness who is listening to the information and how they hmm. perceive that information. Cool. Um, let me see if I have any more notes. Um, what does Seth, what would he, what's his opinion about Kundalini awakening? I don't even know what that is. People yeah. have asked me about that. I'm like, what on earth is that? Um, I'll I, explain it in a moment. Um, okay. What is your opinion about Kundalini awakening? It's energy work. 
Oh my gosh. And here come all my kids. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go. We're, no worries. we're in a mess. Apparently th- there's diarrhea in the diaper. It's a mess. No I'm worries. So- but look, let's stop it here. I'll do an outro and we'll ask to collect some more questions. Thank you. Oh, Okay, cool. I'm coming. <laughs> All right, Thank guys. You. Well, we'll cut this one yeah, short. Sorry about that. And it's we'll... just it's diarrhea time, unfortunately. Okay, oh, well, goodness well, me. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And we'll continue this uh, again this week if, if you have time. All right. Yeah, sounds great. I do. Definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. No Eric, worries. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Talk to you Let's later. Bye. Not, I don't know. Let mommy.